What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. Today we're going to be talking about the results from uh, Milwaukee Regionals, and I think this has been like a very, very interesting tournament. Uh, so, if you don't know, I was there personally this time, I was able to travel out there since I live so close, uh, and you know, I didn't... I brought a Buzzwool team, which was honestly a little bit of a mistake. I probably should have just brought the original team I was thinking of, uh, but I wasn't too concerned with like top cutting or doing super well at this one. Since it's my only event this season, uh, I wouldn't be able to go to Worlds anyway. So it was more fun just to hang out, say hi to all the fans of the channel who were uh, present at that tournament. I got to meet uh, that's a plus one, Joe UX9, you know, Pokey Bros, a ton of other people uh, that I've been talking online with for years. So that was honestly my favorite part of the entire event. So, you know, just before we start, shout out to all those people. Uh, hopefully we can hang out again soon because I had a great time. But yeah, uh, before we get into this, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon content uh, and answer my comment question of the day. What do you think is going to win the North American International Championships? Because I believe that's the last tournament within North America before we get to the World Championships, which is just uh, a month or so away. So get excited for that. But yeah. Uh, I was here personally, so I actually uh, saw a lot of these teams in action uh, on stream uh, after, like on day two, I was actually watching top eight uh, with my girlfriend and a bunch of our buddies from Chicago. So yeah, let's actually talk about uh, the top eight teams. Uh, so we see here the winner was Zhang Ze. I can't pronounce the name right. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, but we actually see uh, Eveldon with Incineroar, uh, Venusaur, Bronzong, and uh, Regieleki. Now, let me tell you something. That bronzong had one of the most insane sets i have ever seen uh well not like move sets but like it the way that um that zhang played it was like absolutely absurd uh so game one he it, it was game one of semifinals. uh he actually played it uh like on lead and he went for um iron defense and it got burning jealousy by uh oliver escalin i believe it was oliver escalin's um burning jealousy and cinema and that ended up burning it, making it so the body press was like all but useless. And that was crazy. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically the Bronzong did nothing game one. He left it game two. And then game two is the one that he won. And then game three, he brought it back. And he ended up winning the whole thing with Bronzong in a 2v1 versus uh, Oliver's Zacian and Thunderous. So that was like really cool. Uh, but the team is super solid. Uh, he, I believe he did reveal Sleep Powder on Venusaur. Um... The Eveltal, I don't remember the item on, uh, and the Groudon, I believe, was bulk up. So, uh, yeah, no, I honestly, like, we've seen Eveldon do well at tournaments a lot in the past. Uh, Eveldon is an archetype that only has, like, one seriously losing matchup, and it's Karam White, uh, which you don't really see all that often anyways. Um, but if you do face off versus it, you basically just say, like, okay, yeah, I lose. Uh, because if you face off versus Karam White, Karam White is capable of one-shotting pretty much everything on the team. Uh, you know, Max Hailstorm for Eveltal, Max Hailstorm for Groudon, Max uh, Quake for uh, Incineroar, Max Hailstorm for Venusaur, Max Quake for Bronzong, even though you're levitating, Turbo Blaze turns off your uh, levitate, so it just ignores it and you, you know, go down anyways. Uh, and Regieleki obviously just gets one shot by pretty much anything. So yeah, uh, Eveldon, very, very good archetype, very bulky, very... Um, I don't know, like you can play it a lot of different ways. Obviously, Veltal is like a possible Dynamax target, uh, which allows you to play more offensively. Um, and Venusaur with GMAX Vine Lash is going to be an option for um, like Swordfish matchups since uh, Max Vine Lash is going to allow you to uh, get some KOs on uh, Kyogres. But also, if you're running Weather Ball with uh, Groudon, uh, you're going to be able to go for Max Flares, which allows you to one shot most Sashians. So it's a very like board positioning heavy team uh, that has a lot of options and honestly I think if you're running like Groudon Eveltal in this format you absolutely have to run Bronzong uh, and usually an Iron Defense set uh, because if you don't run Iron Defense you're going to lose to Cali Ice under Trick Room in like 99% of matches so yeah Bronzong sort of holds the team together and that was really cool uh, to see it actually come through. Now Nathaniel Sittler I believe he was running a Choice Specs Calyrex Shadow with Helping Hand Clefairy and this was the scariest 50-50 I have seen uh like ever <laughs> so um basically there were a couple of matches i believe it was versus james evans uh oh no am i mixing it up did oliver i don't know i'm, I'm mixing up my matches but basically 
There was one match where this um, Calyrex Shadow went up against a Prankster Thunderous, and Prankster Thunderous obviously has a couple of options versus Cali Shadow. Uh, it's usually going to want to go for Eerie Impulse since it cuts the damage of uh, the Specs Astral Barrage. Uh, but when you're facing off with Cali Shadow and Clefairy, it's like, okay, if you Eerie Impulse, it's going to go right into Clefairy because they're going to follow me, so you might as well go for Taunt. Well, that was the thing. It was like 50 50. There was one game where game one, he essentially just like just won the game. There was one game where game one, he won the game turn one. That's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, he went for an eerie impulse. No, he went for a taunt into the Clefairy, but the Clefairy, rather than going for follow me, helping handed, and he lost both of his Pokemon on lead immediately, which is just awful. But yeah, that was really cool. Um, this is like a super hyper offensive team. I believe the Whimsicott is running Sunny Day, which allows for the Charizard to function despite the fact this is a rain team. Or not a rain team, but like a, a Kyogre team. So this is a very awesome uh, game. Or this is a very awesome team to see uh, play the game. Uh, we see Oliver Escalin's team. I believe Oliver was the one running Prankster Thundy, but I might be wrong. I'm like mixing up a few of them right now. Uh, but this is just like standard Swordfish. Uh, he played super well, which is awesome. Uh, I believe... He ended up losing to Nathaniel Sittler or Zhang. I, I can't remember which one I watched. Uh, but yeah, James Evans uh, was running a uh, Calyrex Shadow Groudon team. Uh, just normal, like, I don't know. This is like a normal, like, Groudon Cali Shadow setup. There isn't anything too special here. Uh, the only thing that I noticed is that, like, it has it definitely struggles versus Rainy Sun. Or not Rainy Sun, versus uh, Calyrex uh, Ice, uh, which, you know, a Bronzong would patch up a little bit. But uh, I, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe he just like didn't face too much Trick Room in the tournament and he was able to like get through that way. Or maybe there's like some tech on this team that allows him to do super well versus Trick Room. Because honestly, yeah, I mean like the Gastron does underspeed Calyrex Ice, which allows you to go for Yawn and stuff. Uh, Incineroar is able to pivot in and out. So there's probably just like a game plan that he has for Trick Room that allowed him to get through those matchups very easily that I'm just not seeing on the face uh, of the team. So yeah, uh, Calvin Neeson, shout out to you. Uh, I got dinner with him. Very cool dude. Uh, we see this is like a tournament where we actually saw like a decent amount of Lunala Groudon uh, and there's there's a good reason for that Lunala Groudon has a lot of options uh, in this format and it, it's it's funny because it, it always I, I've said this a few times Lunala is a Pokemon that at the beginning of the format is always slept on and then like the further you go into the format the more it picks up and the more like standard it becomes like it ends up becoming good right at the tail end of the format and I faced like three Lunaldon teams in my run so that was really cool um or no I faced like two and then I faced like three Rhinia Suns <laughs> uh but yeah so uh Lunala Groudon is useful because Lunala has access to Trick Room it can pretty much eat any one hit um, and if you have to like double into it to prevent Trick Room unless you have Taunt, it also is able to defend itself versus Incineroar very effectively because it has access to Meteor Beam. And then after a Meteor Beam plus Power Orb hit, you're going to be hitting some pretty powerful Moongeist Beams. Most of the time, you're not going to Dynamax Lunala because Lunala just doesn't really like to be Dynamaxed. Uh, it gets more value out of its uh, utility moves like Wide Guard, Protect, Trick Room, those sort of things. Uh, but for the most part, you're going to be seeing like Trick Room, Moongeist Beam, Meteor Beam, and either Wide Guard or Protect. That's like the standard set right now. But yeah, uh, with Groudon, you can imagine why that's useful. Wide Guard will block out things like Water Sprouts and Origin Pulses, opposing Prespice Blades, uh, being able to delete an Incineroar despite being weak to it is super nice. Uh, and getting a Trick Room off versus Kyogre teams is going to be super important to winning. Uh, and obviously, you know, it comes with its usual you know, band of partners where you see a Groudon and Lunala, you want to face or you want to use your Incineroar to face off with that. Therefore, things like uh, Thunderous with a Defiant ability are like super useful in this matchup. But yeah, we see two of those teams right here and they both did super well in the in the tournament. Uh, Peng here running uh, just standard Rhinia Sun. I actually saw a lot of Rhinia Sun going into this tournament. And I'm surprised only like one Rhinia Sun top cut this whole thing. So yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of cool. Uh, we did see Zacian uh, Reshiram. I believe it was AV Reshiram. Uh, oh, no, this is this is the guy who was running Prankster uh, Thunderous, who ended up losing to the Specs uh, to the Specs Calyrex Shadow. That's the match that I watched. So, yeah, that was um, really interesting. So the Sable, I believe, is running Sunny Day, which is actually really, really nice tech. Um, I don't know if we saw Quash. I think it was like Sash Sableye. We saw... Um, Foul play, sunny day for sure. Might have seen Quash, and I think their last move was probably Fake Out or Will O Wisp. It might have been no Fake Out Sableye, which honestly is kind of based. Uh, but yeah, uh, we see Double Genie plus 
Zacian, um, Zacian Reshiram, which is actually like a really nice call. You can notice that Zacian plus Reshiram loses hard to a lot of Groudon matchups, which is why Double Genie plus Venusaur is such a nice call here because not only do you have like defensive switch-ins for that matchup, but you also uh, are able to use Venusaur super aggressively to try to delete Groudon or one of its many partners. The only thing that, you know, Groudon doesn't like to deal with is Charizard. And if you're running Ancient Power on your uh, Reshiram, which I believe this one was, uh, you're obviously going to be able to deal with Charizard pretty effectively. So that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, beyond that, we go into, you know, 9 through 32 and this was only top eight cuts so uh these were like the teams that did super well in the tournament and were like competing for you know prize money and stuff but uh beyond that like just the general trends that we see within the teams here um like this i would argue is one of the less diverse tournament top cuts we've seen in a while uh, or not top cuts but like top 32 but that isn't to say this wasn't like a really cool variety of teams that you would like see when you're facing off uh versus like opponents in swiss rounds um Overall, like the teams that did super well, uh, we saw like a heavy amount of Groudon. We actually saw a pretty like, it, it, what is it? Kyogre was pretty underrepresented, but the two Kyogre teams in top eight did go pretty far. Um, we saw a lot less Trick Room in top cut beyond like Lunaldon, which is sort of a soft Trick Room. Hard Trick Room teams definitely didn't do as well as usual. You know, the Palkia plus Calyrex uh, combos, the Dialga Calyrex combos. Um, but yeah, I mean, like overall, I think this was like a really fun tournament just to be a part of and watch. Uh, I think that this is going to be the tournament to look out for beyond uh, NAIC when it comes to what you would expect at Worlds. Uh, obviously, the World Championships uh, is like, you know, the highest stakes tournament of the year uh, and people will be running some strange things that they've been working on for a long time uh, just for the sake of like pioneering something that they know how to they that like they, they know works and works well versus what's popular uh but you also will see a lot of standard stuff that people are just very used to piloting um comfortably in tournaments uh and like that they think they can go far in the tournament with basically you're gonna see people go like on one side of the road or the other like the left side of the road is like hey this is standard stuff that I know how to pilot this is gonna be your Rinya Suns your Lunaldons your Swordfish and then on the right side of the road you're gonna see like people running like this is my choice band urshifu water landorus uh plus i don't know like pseudo wudo team that definitely beats rinya sun and that is like a really solid matchup or whatever i don't know basically this is like the the point where we know what's what's going to be meta for worlds however we also know that there's going to be like someone that just pulls something out of nowhere and they're gonna probably go far in the tournament might win we've seen it a few times like you know, 2016 we saw that um endeavor raichu team end up winning the world championships but also we saw it take like fourth i believe or third with um with like uh marcus statter like he also ran it um you know we've seen like pachirisu win obviously like that's like the the poster child of like the world championships at this point um and we've seen you know just random stuff like brick brick marowak go pretty far into tournaments zirka i believe got second at 2017 so there's going to be someone running something crazy and that's all I'm, that's that's what i'm trying to get at we this tournament is what's popular and then at the worlds we're going to see pretty much this plus crazy stuff that's what i'm trying to prep you guys for <laughs> which took way longer to explain than it should have but yeah um that's my thoughts if you guys enjoyed leave a like subscribe to the channel turn notifications sorry i was absent for like two days it was because i was just at this event so yeah have a nice one bye